Hello everybody and welcome to the mid-season review. So we've had nine rounds of footy this year and I thought this was the perfect time to take a step back because we have about a week or so, which is not really a massive break, but we have about a week or so to just digest what has been a very interesting first half of the year. And as we get to this midway point, I thought it was uh, it was important to go through and, and just track how we're feeling. And obviously with this, this is something that I've done over the over the course of the last few years during the mid-season. So this will just be my observations and then I definitely want to get into it with you guys in the comments. So feel free to add your, your input here because there's so many metrics that I've looked at, so many stats. Um, I've gone through all the player ratings to, to talk about you know the best players and whatnot. So basically, I really broke it down into a few questions. What's worked? What hasn't worked? Who's been our best player? or players, and who's been our most improved players, and then uh, I'll go through and give an overall grade out of 10. So let's start with with what's worked. So I think, um, I feel like our offense has worked. You know, we are the fifth most scoring team in the league. Now, obviously, at the time of making this video, Essendon and Melbourne haven't played a game. They've got that game in hand, but both of them are 150 points behind us. So I don't see that changing unless they score 150 in a game, but we're fifth in the league for, for most points. And, and for me, that's a big tick. Going back to 2019, the struggle, particularly early in the season, was how is this team going to be able to generate enough score? You know, we were playing these real defensive, scrappy games and we just couldn't get anything going. So I, I think, and just from the eye test, I felt that. I felt that we were more efficient, uh, more exciting, um, and and, and it's, it's backed up with that. Um, the defense, this is an interesting one because I'll get back to it with what hasn't worked. Oh, I feel like the defense is settled. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, the back six hasn't really changed. Obviously, Newman's come out and he's been injured and we've brought Willow in. But apart from that, I feel like that back six is really settled. And I think that's I think that's a tick. That's important. Um, we'll get to why it hasn't worked, which is a bit of a shock to me. But that's something I wrote down. And I think... Even though we have had inconsistencies, I think overall in games compared to last year and the year before, and but really you want to talk about over the last 12 months, I think we're able to apply more pressure for longer in games. We'll get to inconsistencies in a moment, but I do feel that's the case. And uh, I feel like there's a, a renewed sort of heightened level of confidence in the group and what we're capable of. And I've seen that in games. I've, I've seen it not go our way as well, but that's something I'm feeling. Um, I think the even spread of contributors is definitely something that has worked for me this year. You know, in years gone, Cripps has a massive game and, you know, it's sort of like, you know, we're losing games, but he has those those big 25, 30 possession games. Whereas this year, particularly in the wins, we've had a much even spread of contributors. Guys like Setterfield, Kennedy, Gibbons, Walsh, these guys are really just setting themselves around Crips and just elevating their game. And I think that's been something that I've enjoyed watching and what I think has worked. Um, the ball movement, as I mentioned before, you know, off turnover as well. I think we're the number one in the league uh, or right up there for, for scores off turnover. And, and that's something we haven't really been able to say about this group. So I think what's worked overall, I think the main one for me is, is the offense in, in a funny way. It's, it's funny how that's worked out. So when I looked at what hasn't worked, right? Now, I did say that, you know, the defense is more settled and I felt like it worked, but I had a look at it. We've actually conceded the third most points in the league. Um, and that's alarming, I think. I think that I think there's something to look at there. And, I, you know, this is where I want you to refine that. Like, why is that? I don't know what it is, but at the end of the day, I'm looking at the numbers and we have conceded the third most points in the league. I find there's been games where... Um, you know, the pressure hasn't been there from the midfielders and so it puts the pressure onto the defenders and, and we concede. Um, when you look at the inconsistencies in games and I'll, I'll just reel you through some of these moments throughout the course of the season and I found this on on Facebook. My man Riley Starraj had written this down. So you look at the Richmond game, we can see the first five goals. We look at the Melbourne game, we can see the first seven goals. The Geelong game, we can see the last five goals. The Essendon game, we conceded four goals in a row. St. Kilda, we conceded seven of the first eight goals. Port Adelaide, we conceded the last five scoring shots, 10 of the last 11 inside 50s. And Hawthorne, we conceded seven goals in a row. So there is a little bit in, in that for sure. We, When we do have the momentum go against us, 
we're not able to stem it. It, it just it piles on. And I think that's where a lot of the youngsters come this year. And, and that's probably something that hasn't worked. So we're conceding points, but we're conceding momentum in games really strongly. It's for as good as we... I think the, I think the Hawthorne game is probably the perfect example for as good as we can be and what, as good as we have been this season. When we have been bad, it's bad. And, you know, they talk about when you want to become a great team, you've got to bridge that gap between your best and your worst. And that's something I think isn't working right now. You know, when you de- dive a little deeper into it, I had a look with fourth least, we have the fourth least disposals of any side in the competition. Now, Melbourne and Essendon are only 100 or 200 behind us. So they'll overtake us. So really, we're the second last team in the competition for disposals. And obviously, that's a very... You know, it's an interesting stat, but the reason why I'm talking about it is because it just what what I what I look at that and say is well we're not winning enough of the ball. Um, we're scoring heavily, pretty well, which tells me we're efficient with our ball movement, which is why I like the offense. But second last in the competition for the disposals, and you know, then I start thinking, okay, well I know that Cripps has been a little bit down on his disposals. I know that Murphy and, and Simo, you know, have been a little bit down on their disposals and some of these ball winners, like the other guys who are around Crips are rising a little bit, but the others have, have, have dropped off a little bit. So that was an interesting one for me. And, you know, yeah, so overall, what hasn't worked for me is, yeah, the the, the inconsistency in games and the, the inability to stop the momentum when it's not going our way. Um, adjusting mid-game, I've noticed that we, we aren't really able to do that consistently week to week and you know is it a hallmark of a team who is where we're at yeah it sounds about right it sounds about right where we are you know four and five i think is a perfect summary of exactly where we are i don't think we've deserved to win more games or lose more games than we have i think it's it's spot on i think it's pretty much evened itself out so that's that's what i'm looking at so offense is a tick um and in a funny way defense is, is not a tick which is something i i didn't i didn't really expect to be looking at and saying but that is that is how it is for me um let's look at our best players uh, i went through the player ratings and uh, i've got weedering as our, our you know if i was giving best and fairest votes every week i think weedering would be our best i believe he's been our most consistent player even in losses he has stood out as someone who hasn't really you know gotten beaten he's had some you know clangers and whatnot but not I think he would be easily our best player, like by quite some quite some margin, to be honest. Um, I think Jack Martin's been our second best player for the year. He's had probably two games this year where he just wasn't there, there thereabouts. But I think when he's been good, he's been really good. Um, and I think Ed Kerno has been our third best player. I think when I talk about consistency, even in losses and, and battling and, and whatnot, I think he's been right up there. So. Um, I think this will be totally different amongst everyone else, and I'm really keen to see how you've looked at the season. So for me, Weedering, Martin, and Kerno, they're our best three so far, and uh, this is more of an eye test for me. I didn't go into their stats or whatnot, but I just went through player ratings that I've done all year, and, and the, these are the you know the best three that I came up with. So that's an interesting one. I think our most improved player has been Will Setterfield followed pretty closely by, I think, Michael Gibbons. I think he's been really improved from last year. I think Setters is just, you know, he's had a real four or five-week patch. He started really slowly, let's be honest, first two, three rounds, and then he's had a four or five-week patch where it's just been, he's added something else to his game, confidence, he's being put into the midfield, and that that might be, you know, that might be something that I need to take into account as well. Yeah, he's around the ball a lot more. That's why he's, you can see him a lot more, but... I think he's been the most improved from 2019. Um, Gibbons has added more midfield minutes, obviously. He's a bit more crafty. He had a a block of of form very similar to Will Setterfield for three or four or five weeks where it was kind of like, well, God, you know, Gibbons is having his best game of his career kind of thing. So I I look at those two as our most improved, and and that's a positive for me. That's that's a good sign. That's exactly what I want to be seeing. Um... You know, recruit of the year probably has to be Jack Martin, I think. I think Pitt has been pretty good for us. Um, Eddie Beth has been solid for us in in more than just on-field for us. So, yeah, when I look at guys who have probably stagnated at this point, um, guys who, you know, from 2019 and, you know, pre-seasons and all of that, I, I, think, I think Samo's probably one that I'm watching and I'm finding myself saying, well, has there been a regression or is it a new role? And that's the discussion point here for, for you guys to elaborate on. You know, we, do I have to grade him differently because he's a defender now? Is it is he more of a lockdown now? And 
it's a worry because he's part of that 2016 crop and, and Zach Fisher as well, who's obviously got himself injured, but he hasn't, you know, he's been back playing in this reserves grade football for the last three weeks, I think now, and he, he can't get a game and starting to worry about that a little bit. Um, I think Cripps has been a little down on, on what we saw last year and I understand leadership roles and all that. There's a lot more that goes into it, but yeah, there's been there's been a couple that I'm just mindful of and I'm hoping that they can rise in form in the second half of this season because we're going to need them to. You know, I, I can see guys around them who weren't having good years step up a little bit and then once we round it out with the Murphys, the Cripses, the Joneses, the Simos, once they start playing good football and consistently great football that they're capable of playing, I think that's when we'll start seeing more consistency. Um, you know, the, the leadership's probably one that's been a bit of a, a sticky point for me as well. We've struggled at times with that. Um, and look, overall, I'm, I'm going to give us a, a score out of 10. So taking into account everything, I'm going to give us a... I'm going to give us a 6 out of 10. So it's just above a pass mark. I understand that we're not you know, we're not we're not uh, we don't have a 50% win record. We've lost more games that we've than we've won by one obviously. It's an even it's an odd number of 9 games. So there's that, but I think we've we've improved, uh, you know, we have improved from 2019. That's the main thing. So that's why you get the 5 and I think the way that we're scoring, um, the you know, when we do play well, it looks pretty good and I think we've played overall. I think we've played some pretty good football. Uh, this year. So I'm looking at it as a six. It's funny what a loss can do to you. And I'm not being too reactive over the, the, the previous loss against the Hawks, but yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. Uh, it's definitely difficult. So it's, it's a six out of 10 so far for me. Um, I have enjoyed the season of obviously the situation we're in. I'm grateful to have the footy back and, and, you know, to even be able to talk positive or negative about the boys and the club has been something that I'm enjoying. It's, it's keeping me it's keeping me sane. Let's be honest. Um, you know, I'm I'm someone that really commits to the footy season every year. I'm sure a lot of you are like that. And obviously, when you you know with the channel and everything like that, it just it's my focal point. It keeps me keeps me going. It, it's that it's that something. Everyone needs that something to focus on, and, and that's what this has been for me. So yeah, it's a six out of ten for me. I, I'm I'm satisfied. But you know, we've got we've got a lot of work to do. There, there's we can't be happy with you know, the fact that we've just improved a little bit from last year, we've, we've got to take it to that next level. And it's interesting because we, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for the fact that we're not just a basket case anymore and coming back from where we've come back from, you know, so that there is that as well. So I'm happy that we're in games for longer and it's not about, oh, we're we going to be able to run the game out as much as what it is. I'm pretty confident that we're going to be able to put ourselves in a winning position. Most games, maybe not every game, but most games we're able to put ourselves in a winning position. Now, whether we you know, go on with it or, or not is a different story. So I am enjoying uh, a longer level of competitiveness from the group. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically how I see it so far. So for you guys, we're going to talk about it in the on the show tonight. Um, but I want you guys to give me at the halfway point the same questions. Uh, you can, it can be as long or as short as you want it to be. I like the detail because I like to really learn from you guys at home. So what's worked? What hasn't worked? Your best players... Um, you're most improved, and then give the give the season a rating out of 10 so far. So it's only a, a mid-season review. We'll obviously get to the end-of-season review, and we'll start talking about what's happened over the course of the year. But I think it's a good time for us to just take a step back, take a breath, and analyze what's happened. So I'll see you in the comments, and go the Mighty Blues.